Hey there, in this video I want to discuss percents and viewport units in Webflow. Now while viewport units and percents are very closely related, there are some subtle differences between them. So I want to discuss what those subtle differences are and why you will notice that Webflow developers will use one specific unit for one measurement and another unit for another measurement. So to start things off, I want to go over a basic examples of percents and viewport units. So, so far on this page, all I have is the basic structure of client first. I have a page wrapper and then I have a main wrapper. So to start things off, I'm going to add in a div to this main wrapper. So I'm going to go to the plus. I'm going to add in a div block. I'm just going to put it under my wrapper. And I'm going to name this div block as grandparent. And I'm going to give it a width of 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Now this quick demonstration is more specific for width. So all of them are gonna have the same height of 500 pixels. What I want you to pay attention to is the 500 pixels for the grandparent right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a background color. And then this grandparent is gonna have a child element and we're gonna name it parent. So I'm going to drop in another div and I'm going to name it parent. And this one's going to have a width of 250 pixels and a height of 500 pixels. We'll give it a background color. So right here is our grandparent and then we have our parent right here. And now obviously the parent is gonna have a child of their own. So we're gonna add another div and we're gonna name this one child. Now you'll notice the grandparent, I gave it a width of 500 pixels. Parent, I gave it a width of 250 pixels. If I was to continue in this succession, the child would have a size, a width of 125 pixels. However, I'm going to give the child a width of 50% and a height of 500 pixels. I'll give it a background color. So this is the child right here, and it's behaved like you would expect, 50% of the parent. Well, watch what happens if, for example, we say that this, this family is still living in a multi-generational household. And the grandparent is still making the rules for the family. The grandparent says, everything that happens in this family is going to be relative to me. So now the grandparent's position is relative. And let's say then the child's position became absolute. You'll notice that the child now became the same size as his parent. That's because the child is now relative to the grandparent. So just because there's a, a div that has a percentage-based measurement doesn't mean that that percent is always going to be of its direct parent. Sometimes the position property also plays an account in effect. So it's a lot more nuanced than just being 25% of its direct parent or 50% of its direct parent. So I'm going to get rid of these. And so another example now is I want to show you is in this main wrapper, I'm going to add in another div. And you'll notice that sometimes people like to give measure direct measurements to their section elements. So I'm going to go ahead and name this my section. And for this first example, I'm going to give it a width of 100% and a height of 50 rem. I'll go ahead and give it a background color. As you see, it's behaved as expected. The width is 100% of the screen of its parent. Now, watch what happens if I change this width to 100 viewport width. Nothing changed. It's still the same as you would expect. 
Well, watch what happens. I'll change this back to percent. Now watch what happens if I change this height measurement to 100 viewport height. As expected, and that takes up the entire viewport. Now will the same thing happen the height as did for width if I change this to 100%? Well, let's find out. I'll change this to 100%, and now it's gone. That's because for height, the percentage takes it from its parent. So I'll go up to its parent, which in this case is my wrapper, and I'll say 100%. And still nothing. So I'll go one more step up. I'll go to page wrapper. We give it a height of 100%. And still nothing. That's because if no parent has a defined height, like 50 rem or 20 rem, then you have to go all the way up to the body and give the body tag a height of 100%. And then we see our blue section again. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. I'm going to change this back to viewport height and back. So that's why you'll see that height is usually done in viewport height and not percent. Now, to piggyback on this example, you'll notice that sometimes developers want to have this grand hero section with this large image that they have set to 100 viewport height. And most of the time, you can get away with that. However, it's something you probably don't want to do many times. What you want to do is you want to set the minimum height to 100 viewport height. And you're probably saying, what's the difference between setting the height to 100 VH compared to the minimum height of 100 VH? Well, I'm going to go ahead and undo the min height. And I'm going to drop in a div. I'm just going to center it real quick. And I'll just give this div quickly a max width of 600 pixels. 100%. And I'm just going to add in a paragraph. And I'll make the text. So there's our paragraph. In this situation, no harm, no foul. It doesn't exceed the content. Well, watch what happens if I was to keep adding more content to this. Now you can't see it because it's white text, but if I was to make this entire body all pages navy, you'll notice that the text has now gone over our hero se our section. Our section bounding box is right here, and the text goes over. That's because when you set the height to 100 viewport height, you're saying you're basically telling it, do not grow, do not shrink, do not collect $200. You're going to be 100 viewport height at all times. Now watch what happens if we get rid of this and make the minimum height 100 VH. It all stays contained within our section. And to show you this, I'll add in another div. And I'll call this section two. And I'll give it a background color of red so you can see. No overflowing content. That's why when it comes to setting heights, you want to use a minimum height for VH and not of strict height. So now let me show you a practical example. In this page right here, all we have is a nav bar and a hero section. And you'll notice that it's about 70% of the viewport height, meaning I can't scroll up and down. This is all the pages. If I even preview it, I can't go up and down. This is all, all as far as I can go. If I was to set this section home to hero to 100% and then publish, It behaves as expected. 
full width of the screen. Now watch what happens if I was to set the width to 100 viewport width. I'll go ahead and publish again. Now I'll refresh. And nothing's changed. That's because viewport width and percent, there will be no difference on width if your page doesn't exceed 100% of the viewport height. And the reason that is is because 100 viewport width takes the scroll bar into account. So once our page exceeds 100% of the viewport height and the scroll bar becomes visible, that width of the scroll bar is then added on to the width of our section. So watch what happens if I set this width to 100 viewport width and then add in a section below. So I'll go div and go section is section two. And I'll just give this a large number. So I'll give it a height of 200 VH. So now we have our scroll bar. And watch what happens when I publish it again. So I'll refresh. And you'll notice what we have now. Horizontal scroll. And this horizontal scroll is just that little bit that came from this width of this scroll bar. That's why you'll notice that Webflow developers will always have their widths and percent. And if they set a height, it will always be a minimum height. So I'll go ahead and publish this once again. I'll go ahead and refresh. And the horizontal scroll is gone. So there you go, a quick overview on viewport units and percent in Webflow. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.